And what about some of the advances in surgery, in the actual surgery? So everyone knows about laparoscopic surgery. My uncle had his gallbladder out with these scopes and he went home the next day. So breast surgery is going through the same evolution. We're doing surgery through tiny little incisions, using fiber optic retractors. We're sparing not only the skin of the breast, but the skin of the nipple uh, most of the time now. This has huge psychological benefits to the patient, and frankly, it also increases the amount of sensation in the skin of the breast after mastectomy. Implants are better than they've ever been. Breast implants are actually shaped like breasts now. They used to be shaped like jellyfish, mm -hmm. and today we have custom-made, custom-shaped implants. All of the techniques are better, and the, that means that as we cure 95, 96, hopefully 100% of patients, we've, we've minimized the, the, the cosmetic blow. I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about some of the trials. And at one point, it would take up to 15 years right. uh, to get answers. And now there are new procedures that have shaved upwards of 12 years off of that. Yeah, uh, so that? Uh, in, in my generation, early on, we would do a trial, and then we would wait 10 years to see what happened. We don't have the time, the money, or the patience to do that anymore. So with medicines becoming as effective as they are, and they're really effective, we're seeing something called a PCR, a complete pathologic response. PCR is? That means that in someone with a known breast cancer, who we do chemotherapy, for example, first, and then we test the breast, the cancer's gone. It's simply melted away with the chemo and that's called a complete pathologic response. That is now a valid endpoint for clinical trials, which means that if we're doing a trial of drug A and the patients have a complete pathologic response, we're done. We don't have to wait 10 years for those results. This has been an enormous advantage for us in, in, in drug development, in trial development, and it's gonna help women much quicker. What about the uh, chances of recurrence? If you have a lump and you, you know, are ha able to have it removed with the minimal invasive and you know minimal uh, amount of, of treatment afterwards, uh, wh what's the recurrence? Well, breast cancers are like my family. You have good guy family members and bad guy family members and members in jail, and so um, <laughs> uh, looking down a microscope. If you look at a family portrait of my family, you can't really tell who the good guys and the bad guys are. We've been doing that with breast cancer for 50 years. We look down a microscope and we see breast cancer cells and we try to make a guess about their personality. Those days are over. That's a, that's a descriptive understanding of the disease. A pathologist says, I think this is a good guy. We're now developing ways to have a functional understanding by doing gene profiling. Wow. So a platform like Oncotype DX that looks at 21 genes tells us with great detail about the personality of the breast cancer that's in front of us. And so that patient that you mentioned with an, what appears to be a small, early stage negative lymph node breast cancer may or may not be. So. So that brings up the importance of personalizing medicine, of genomic profiling, of getting all of the information.